I would say that my daily routine um, starts the night before probably. Um, before I leave the studio, I like to completely clean it, get everything back in its position so that I start the morning with a fresh, clean studio. And I make two to-do lists, quite slightly OCD. One is a to-do list of things to buy. So tools and materials that are going to be needed for the week ahead of making. And the other to-do list is a process to-do list of um, you know, putting the first layer of a rubber silicon mold on, then the second layer, then plaster, and I can just tick it off so mentally in my head I know what I'm doing. I use a lot of um, fabric, um, which means spending hours on the sewing machine. A lot of them are very big, oversized structures that are all made out in fabric, and I, I use a lot of detailing with kind of ribbing the fabric. Um, but then I like to play them off against um, harder materials such as the concrete and the plasters or welding steel structures for the fabric to kind of get submerged into. And I like to play the kind of opposites off each other with the kind of the soft and the hard, the feminine, the masculine. And a lot of the work looks like it is gendered, not by me as a female maker, but by itself, whether it, it, it could be considered a male being or a female thing um, and I'm, I'm sort of interested in male female relations and kind of sexual innuendo and I, I wouldn't want to think of the work as taking itself too seriously I think it should be fun to look at um, and a lot of it is slightly ridiculous you know things are oversized um, things hang in a certain way that is sort of slightly stupid and clumsy which I enjoy and, and also recently a lot of the work looks like it's consuming another element so whether that's a fabric structure consuming um, a steel welded table so it sort of brings in this idea of um, predator prey what's what's eating the other and a lot of the time it's the female eating the male it's not that I dislike males but I think um, family is very important for me and I've got three younger sisters and I'm the eldest so um, that's kind of affected my relationship to women, I suppose, and I'm, my grandparents, uh, my grandmas are very sort of strong women, and so is my mum, so I think that's kind of informed my um, ways of, 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 have, of building up this kind of relationship of, of gender in the work. I find the inspiration for my work um, in many places. A lot of it comes from the everyday, Specifically working on building sites has given me a kind of real insight to kind of the posture of an object, I'll call it. Like if I see something on the side of the street, for instance, a road sign that's held down by bags of sand, then I kind of like to imagine the bags of sand as having a kind of a slump or a, or a posture. And then I'm kind of interested by how humans have this need to project onto inanimate objects um, so if you like anthropomorphize them and also if, if you're kind of helping on a building site you're working on a on a huge scale and I think that's also where my um, sort of relationship to scale comes from in the sculpture as well because some of it is um, sort of more on a, a hand made hand scale but um, often they're made in in mass so that then they become kind of this oversized um, sculpture which again brings back brings it back to this large scale there are there are elements in the work that I can't imagine straying away for for a long time um, I think I'll always be using powders that when are added to water go from soft to hard and set so the plasters and the concretes um, but then also the things feed in like I've, I've started casting wax um, and I wasn't a rubber silicon caster three months previous. It's something that I've kind of had to teach myself. Um, I guess this is where it, it, it becomes really important with the peers that you have, the, your fellow artists, whether this is um, people for me that are on my master's course or people that I'm sharing a studio with. Um, so I would approach them about how to use a material if I've seen them using something similar. And then I guess it turns to asking technicians if they're around, but then it's difficult to find technicians once you've left the institution, so that becomes difficult. And then I guess you, you then go to the internet and see if you can read up anything about it or watch a YouTube video. Um, 
of someone using the material and that's I found that that's the best way to kind of learn how to start with the material and, and get to the finished product but it's always better I think to have a hands-on approach so if you've got someone that knows how to use it that's willing to to share that knowledge then then that's when it becomes helpful. God, I don't think you ever know a material. I think some people might say they know a material, but I don't think you ever you ever can. You can become comfortable with a material in a way where it just feels like maybe eating. You know, you don't question putting something like from hand to mouth. And I think you have that relationship to making the work. Like when I use concrete, I don't have to start thinking about the ratio because I know that one makes a soft, makes one makes a hard, makes the different sands affect the mixture. Um, but I wouldn't ever say that I was an expert on concrete because there are so many different avenues. So I think you can't know a material, but you can become comfortable with it for your means of process. I manage part of the process myself. Um, I should say 85% of it is um, all made by me. It's got a very handmade um, finish to the work. A lot of it is sewn by hand or it's on a sewing machine or it's um, casting by hand and you can see the kind of flaws and accidents in the work but I kind of try to celebrate them. But then I've recently begun to um, design steel structures that need to be laser cut so then I, I use a firm in Sheffield um, where I, I design the the, the structure that I want, I send off a drawing, they come up with a price and then bring it back and then I redesign it, we renegotiate and then that's how it gets outsourced and I'm finding that to be a really brilliant way of working because it sort of just takes a whole load off your mind and you know that when you get something it's it fits to size and it's just what you wanted but then at the same time that comes with a very high cost so it's difficult to negotiate the two. Being part of a, of a sculpture community is entirely important to my work. I wanted a sculptural dialogue. I wanted one that was dealing with um, how an object sits in space, what it means to be using materials and making physical things. Um, and I wanted to be surrounded by people that were also sort of battling with this idea. I definitely feel like I've established a um, language of making um, and one that I'm still fascinated by both in terms of the kind of materials and the colour palette that I'm using and the kind of subject area that I'm sort of delving into and I can imagine still working around that for a long time. Um, I guess I'm beginning to sell work and exhibit more and take on commissions which is really exciting and how to negotiate that into my practice as well.